now by the co-lead investigator for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine trial here in South Africa, Professor Linda Gale Becker. Professor, good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. How many doses were given out today? Well, we haven't actually done a roundup yet, Sally, to be honest, but um, a good number of centres started and I heard numbers uh, certainly at, at the, the Kailicha District Hospital, uh, even though we started after two in the end, um, 40 uh, people were vaccinated. Um, I know that the Krutisky site also managed 40, but it was a half day today. Um, we waited for the launch at KDH before we got going. So I think, you know, the systems were tweaked today um, and we will hit the ground running tomorrow morning, I, I would hope, in, in all the sites around the country. Now, my understanding is that the reason this was able to be rolled out so quickly is that it was authorized as part of a clinical trial by the SA Health Products Regulatory Authority. Nevertheless, it came out really quickly. It arrived last night. It was in people's arms. Not that many, but it started today. How did it happen so quickly, particularly when AstraZeneca arrived and it had to go off to Bloemfontein to have everything checked and monitored? How, how come this happened so incredibly quickly? Well, uh, this is the culmination of uh, a sort of medium-sized team working flat out day and night for the last two weeks. It's been fairly extraordinary, but it's also been an amazing coming together of, you know, our colleagues at the National Department of Health, uh, the collaborators at Johnson & Johnson and then of course the research team together with the provincial team so it really has been the name that we've given this program is Sasonke and it really has been a together um, effort to to pull this off so we're not there we've still got you know 500 odd thousand people to vaccinate but I think it has been extraordinary the reason we could use the product right away is that it actually uh, is uh, was designed to be part of clinical trials. So it's already got all the checks and balances in place uh, that vaccines normally need to undergo when they come from a manufacturer. So all of that had been done. Um, and so bringing it into the country means that meant that it could go straight into people's arms. So no shortcuts have been taken. It's just that it, uh, it, it's, it's, it was ready to roll because it uh, was destined for research. So as it's a clinical trial at this stage, um, how are people chosen for the jab or uh, do they volunteer? So Sally, we, you know, clinical trial is, is one concept um, that I believe we've actually completed. So that was called Ensemble and we did that clinical trial, 43,000 people around the world involved. We know this vaccine works. What we are hoping to achieve with Sasonke is what we call a 3B study. So it's open label. There is nobody who is not getting the vaccine. We know everybody is getting the AD26 SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. Um, and it, we are evaluating the program in a real world environment. So it is research in, the, in that sense of the word, um, because we do need to get people's permission uh, to follow up you know, the impact and the outcomes, but it really is about the prelude to a normal vaccine rollout. Um, and we're testing those systems and monitoring them carefully as we go. Uh, but essentially, those other elements of a clinical trial, like people being randomized, sure. people getting placebo, all of that is so how, not happening. I understand. So how were people chosen? Ah, so we are including all healthcare workers um, and people need to register on the EVDS uh, if they register and they opt in and sign the e-consent and they then are scheduled into a vaccine centre, sure. we will vaccinate them. So they have to be over 18, basically, okay. and a healthcare worker. So Obviously, you're, you're going to still be monitoring, even though, as you explained, there's no placebo, there's no blind study on this. It's to see how it works in the marketplace, so to speak. So um, what sort of data are you looking for? What are you going to be monitoring? And have there been any problems reported so far today? Nothing to date. Um, this is an incredibly safe vaccine. Uh, you know, I think you saw the president uh, looked 
hale and hearty as did the health minister and there were a number of other healthcare workers who, who also took part today. We will obviously continue to monitor safety. Safety is always paramount. So we'll be looking out. We have a safety desk. People have numbers they can call if they have any issues. We'll be monitoring the DATCOV, so the, 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 the usual uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, process of, of seeing who's in hospital. If they've been vaccinated, they'll be followed up to see um, you know, if they've had a breakthrough COVID infection, we will want to be able to access mm -hmm. that virus and make sure that it hasn't changed its genetic makeup in any way. When is the next batch arriving? How many doses will there be? So 80,000 arrived last night. We expect 80,000 in two weeks' time, 80,000 two weeks later. Um, and then eventually 60,000 more, taking us to 300,000 doses. Um, and then if we use up those 300,000, we have another 200,000 promised. I see. So I would presume uh, um, that this, uh, you know, it's all on the, the ambit of this 3B study sort of clinical trial in the actual real world. That, I presume, doesn't cover the full, I think it's 9 million doses that we're due ultimately to get from Johnson & Johnson. So at what point does it have to go through the typical health product regulatory authority and get approved as an actual vaccine just to be given out? Hopefully soon, Sally. So at this moment, we know that Johnson & Johnson has gone to the FDA and the European uh, Medicines Agency. So those, those processes are underway. They're seeking emergency use approval. I, I understand that as soon as that is through, then the, it'll be the turn of other regulators in the world, including SAPRA. We do have a rolling approval process with SAPRA. So this it won't be the first time they're hearing about this, of course. And of course, they have approved it for Ensemble, and they've approved it now for this, uh, this early access program. So, um, you know, we hope it'll go quickly, and, and we will then naturally, hopefully, transition um, into being able to use the licensed product. Is this a world first for Johnson & Johnson's COVID vaccine, this 3B study in, uh, in, the, in a population? Yeah, so they, they have completed ensemble, um, and they are um, now looking to their two-dose uh, experiment. Uh, but they have not got the product licensed anywhere else. So, yes, this is a first for South Africa and a wonderful collaboration with J&J. Thank you so much. Great to chat to you. That was co-lead investigator for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine trial here in South Africa, Professor Linda Gale Becker. She is also director of the Desmond Tutu HIV Centre at UCT.